Hey, my creative friends. My name is Shannon from shannonstudio.com. And we are here to talk about a creative life and what that looks like. And some ideas that may be very helpful if during this time, time frame for us too, of having a lot of social isolating going on. So, um, today was super windy here. I asked somebody, I'm in Sweden and I've been in Sweden for nine months and we have a little bit of time left here and it's, hey, hey, Trisha, it's great to live in Sweden, but several months ago before, it was back in the fall, end of summer, I asked somebody who's lived here before, her husband's from here and she's been here for four years and she had been here previously too. They'd come at summer times and spend here. So I asked her, I said, does it get windy here? And, you know, and she's like, because I figured, you know, near the ocean that there's probably a lot of ocean cold breeze sort of thing. So she goes, oh no, it's not windy at all. It's not, no. <laughs> so then as I'm walking and I'm getting blown away on several occasions, I'm always going back to that. Why doesn't she think it's windy here when I'm being blown around like a leaf? And then it realized she has a car. So it doesn't really affect her like it affects me. Oh, hey, hey, boyfriend. <laughs> it's so funny. He's upstairs and so he watches anyways. <laughs> okay, well, okay. Let's talk about um, the tip tonight. Today I was listening to a podcast and in the podcast, oh, I found this great podcast. It's the Happiness Lab. And it has a lot of great, um, a lot of great information. And I was listening to it, and one of the things they said was that when you are in highly intense, when you have highly intense emotions, it really makes us highly motivated to want to talk and share our about our experiences with other people. I'd say a lot of us are in highly intense emotional situations. So we start to get this where we want to talk. And then we it, they mentioned that people start to talk and talk and talk and talk and they can't stop talking. And what happens is they start, you know, people start to push them away because they don't want to hear all about it, especially if they're having similar situations. They kind of want to back away from that for their own feelings as well. And so I thought about that when all of us are, a lot of us are cooped up with our families and, you know, that idea of wanting to talk about problematic things going on or what's happening in the world or what's next or how the news changes every couple hours. And so um, I was thinking also about our own situation the last couple of days. So like yesterday, um, my husband, the boyfriend was home and he was reading his family history. And as he was reading about it, he shared that he, his dad wrote in the family history that he, Alan, had, was in a recital when he was nine or 10 years old, I think, and talked about him doing this recital. And I was like, I didn't know you ever did that. And he, he said, I don't remember it either. either. It was so traumatic, I guess, that he didn't remember it. But it was, uh, we would, I would have loved to have known that story. I think some of our kids who play the piano would love to know that he did that. And yet he didn't remember and I didn't remember um, that. Oh, I didn't even know, he didn't remember. So it's, um, and I also remember about stories how our kids, when they were younger, they'd ask for a real story. So they'd want us to tell about something that happened in real life when Alan would tell them stories at night. Um, also, uh, my, I would, my mother called today and she has dementia. And so I was telling Jessie about talking to her and Jessie recalled memories that she had of her, her last memories of her and, and told a couple stories about her. And then, um, let's see. And then Jessie yesterday, Jessie and Cassie called me and they were doing a puzzle. So they were just sitting there visiting, doing a puzzle. And then they started to, um, ask me questions. Well, first off, Jesse said, I didn't know you were in a band because Cassie told her I was in this little band thing. And I said, it wasn't a real band. And so we started this whole conversation about that. And Jesse was like, you never told me that. And then, um, and then they proceeded to ask me, well, have you ever drank before or smoked pot? And I'm like, <laughs> I said, 
if I did, why would I tell you that? And Jesse goes, because we're adults now. And so, so we proceeded to have this conversation and to laugh and to tell stories. And it was great. And, you know, even, even as families, we don't, we don't know all, all of each other's stories. And I'm sure there's stories of, if you have kids at home, there's stories of that your kids are having that you don't know about. And um, when I was thinking about the tip, I thought, here's, a, here's a, a question, I mean, here's a quote from the How of Happiness book. It says, the advantages of savoring and reminiscing with others have empirical support. Researchers have found that mutual reminiscing, sharing memories with other people, is accompanied by abundant positive emotions such as joy, accomplishment, amusement, contentment, and pride. And so I thought about that, you know, instead of sharing our highly intense emotions about the situation, we could be sharing stories and fun stories and um, exposing stories and just a lot of things that will build um, a shared, start to build a bond and sh having shared memories where we start to know each other better and understand each other better. If you're gonna feel compelled to talk because you're in this situation, talk about some great stories. Ask people, and that's the tip. The thing is, is that Jesse and Cassie just started asking questions. And so then that led into it. Because when I sat there and I thought, oh, I don't know a story to share, you know, when I was prepping for this and I'm like, well, you don't have to force, every time you force something, it just kind of, uh, but you know, sharing, a, ask a question, ask kids, you know, different questions about that might spark the conversation to share the stories. And it can be fun and it can be enlightening and you can find out things you don't know and haven't heard of before. And um, there's this last quote, at, that from the art of making memories, people were a people are able to remember more details of, from positive than negative memories. So they're going to be able to recall the stories. We remember stories so much better than facts, and we there and especially when it has a connection to it that like you're related, that it's going to mean something to them to be able to have these stories and to um, be able to share the stories. And that's why when we get together as families at, at holidays and stuff, we go over the same stories over and over again because we enjoy them. They give us a sense of belonging and they give us a sense of, um, of yeah, belonging. And at this point in time, you wanna know you belong. You wanna feel like you belong to somebody and sharing stories can do that. And it doesn't have to be only family. You can get on the phone, you can get on messaging and, and share stories back and forth with friends as well. So that is a tip, ask the question, share the story. And so share a story with me. I'm gonna to try to think of one too. Share, a, oh, I'll share a story. No, I didn't drink on purpose. I did, because they asked if I drank and smoked pot. No, I only drank on accident because it was like, alcohol beverages laying around. I had a lot of great aunts who who uh, smoke and drank. <laughs> there were lots of drinks around and sometimes I'd pick that drink up thinking it was mine, <laughs> only to find out it wasn't. Um, and smoke pot, no, never, never wanted to, never felt inclined to. I think it was because my mother wasn't, it was um, a nurse and she would often bring home pictures like, um, Life magazine that talked about developing babies and she would talk about certain things about your body. I highly respected my body and didn't want anything else being in control of me but me. And so it just never occurred to me, Never, I was never inclined. And so phew, if I could say no to those when they asked. So that's my story. So I wanted you to share a story and tell me something that I might not know if I know you. And if I don't know you, any story you tell me is gonna be new. So share a story and um, remember, Allison. Allison, I just said to share a story that I might not know about you. So share a story in the thing. But we are done for tonight. Um, Shauna, oh, Shauna Christensen. She is a relative of mine and very talented photographer, I might add. Um, so 
the tip is to ask questions, share stories, because we, in this situation, we want to talk, talk, talk about our intense emotions. And so talking about stories, are, it's not likely to push people away like just telling how you feel constantly. So you'll have to go back and listen if you just tuned in. We are going to share stories in the comments about each other, about ourselves, not each other. <laughs> Now, wouldn't that be fun? I could share some stories. I could share some stories. <laughs> anyway, share your story. And remember, you have a creative heartbeat. So listen for it. And I will be back tomorrow. Bye.